Hi everyone, welcome back to To Be Like Christ, where we do a five minute Bible study every day and we create free PDFs and free resources for people to use. If you'd like the free PDF for today's study of Psalm 52, it's available on our website at tobelikechrist.com and there's a link down in the description to that and to some other things, so check those out. Psalm 52, the author is once again David. He wrote Psalm 51 and now Psalm 52. There are no New Testament references in uh, or in the New Testament back to Psalm 52 that I'm aware of. Now, I will say that on yesterday's video, I missed a reference uh, that appeared in Romans back to Psalm 51. I've now added that to the PDF and changed the website. And so if you downloaded the old PDF and you want that correction, you can download the new one. It should be up under the same link. So the new one is corrected. Okay, themes for Psalm 52. We've got two of them. First, the condemnation of Doeg. Doeg was a servant of Saul. We'll talk more about him in a second. And then the second theme, the righteous will flourish even in an earth that's filled with violence. Then we have our definition section. We've got one term. It's that musical term that we've talked about several times. So I'm not going to take the time to define it again today. It's the word selah. If you want to, you can pause the video right here and read that whole definition. But uh, we've addressed it in multiple, multiple psalms at this point. As with chapter 51, this is a psalm that we have some context about. And this, this context helps us to understand why this psalm was written and who it's directed towards. So when King Saul was trying to kill David back in the books of Samuel, uh, Doeg, one of Saul's servants, had a chance meeting with David at a place called Nob, N-O-B. Doeg reported back to Saul of David's whereabouts, and he also reported that the priests who were there at Nob gave David provision, so they were helping David as he was trying to flee from Saul. Saul was angry with the priests and ordered Doeg, Doeg to kill all of them, and that's what he did. He killed 85 priests in total. So Psalm 52 is a condemnation of Doeg's wicked actions, and uh, specifically of Doeg snitching on David, basically, and trying to help, call, help Saul kill him, even though David hadn't done anything wrong. All that, uh, the background to all of that, if you want to read those stories again, is in the books of Samuel. The nine verses that we have to cover today, I think, break down quite nicely. It's a pretty straightforward chapter when you understand the context. Our application section is actually like twice as long as the outline today. So let's go ahead and get into our nine verses. The title today, The Condemnation of Doeg and the Victory of the Righteous. So David asks this question directed at Doeg. He says, Why do you boast of evil, O mighty man? David describes Doeg as not a particularly good person, of someone whose tongue plotted destruction, someone who was a worker of deceit, someone who loved evil more than he loved good, and as someone who lied more than he spoke the truth. Now, Doeg's evil was not going to go unpunished, and David wrote, quote, But God will break you down forever. He will snatch and tear you from your tent, and he will uproot you from the land of the living. So this curse is being spoken over Doeg, and you know, rightfully so, because he kills 85 innocent priests. Not only does he kill the priests, but he also goes and he kills the women and the children and all the animals in Nob, which was the town of the priests. So this is a very wicked individual. So this curse that's kind of spoken over Doeg is followed by an expression of confidence that the righteous are gonna be vindicated, that they're gonna find their security in God. And David believed that he would, quote, flourish like a green olive tree, even though these violent men were constantly after him. So this takes us to our application, and I wanna I want once again explore this idea of these Psalms of cursing. We've talked about them before, calling them the imprecatory Psalms. To make an imprecation is to make a, uh, speak a curse over somebody, basically. We see David here wishing for judgment to come upon this evil man. And these imprecatory psalms can seem kind of strange to modern day believers. You know, aren't we supposed to be praying for people's salvation, not necessarily for people to be destroyed? I think that's a good question. That's why we've looked at this a couple times in our application section. I heard something the other day that I thought was important to bring into the conversation because it's not a point that I had brought up before. It's not something that we had discussed. One thing to keep in mind is that these imprecatory psalms or these psalms of cursing are generally directed at very wicked people. 
these aren't psalms that are calling for the death of the neighbors down the street, you know, who don't attend Sunday worship, or your business colleague who cheats a little bit on his time card every week, or the salesman who maybe charged you a little more than he, he should have. These psalms are usually directed at people who are actively, intentionally, and consciously fighting against God and promoting evil on the earth. These are people who often know better, but still prefer evil over good. Now, every person sins. That's clear from the Bible, and sin is, is wrong, and so none of those things should be excused. But I do think that there's a distinction to be made between the neighbors who don't, ascend, uh, who don't attend Sunday worship gathering and genuinely wicked people who promote terrible things. People who not only promote those things, but champion them and fight for them to be introduced into our culture. You can probably think of some modern day example of people who promote evil, evil things on the earth. Uh, perversions of all manner of things, right? And they, they not only want those things to become accepted in our culture, but they actively, they evangelize their evil so that other people join them in their evil. Uh, their promotion of these things corrupts their own soul, but what is worse is that they delight when other people join them in their corruption. Do you remember, speaking of imprecations, do you remember what Jesus said about those who lead others into sin? It was a, a rather imprecatory statement in Luke 17, verse 2. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. So if you're somebody actively leading another person into sin and trying to get some, trying to corrupt somebody else, hang a millstone, a heavy rock around your neck, drown yourself in the sea, because that would be better for you than if Jesus gets his hands on you. And he will get his hands on you. Do you remember what Paul said about uh, those who evangelize other gospels? Quote, but even if an angel, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Again, these are people who are actively evangelizing something that's going to take people away from God. They are to be accursed. So I wouldn't necessarily encourage you to pray curses over your church skipping neighbors, but I think the Bible teaches us that it is appropriate at times to pray for the downfall of the enemies of God. And that's what these people are. These people who are actively working for the devil and are hell-bent on destroying others and taking others with them to hell.